Today we're looking at a very simple circuit, this circuit here, which is basically a knock gate. All of you are familiar with how this works. I have an input voltage, which provides the in and an output voltage on the blue wire. I'm going to use my specially made LEDs to show me what's happening. I've soldered resistors onto the legs of the LEDs so I can just plug them into the board to see what's happening. These are great for analysing circuits. So, let's have a look. My input voltage is currently zero because the LED is off. And we should know how a knock gate works. That would mean that my output voltage is currently logic one, shown because my LED is on. And if I reverse the input voltage, so I take the input voltage from zero up to plus five volts in this case, then my input will be logic one and my output correspondingly will be logic zero. We're very familiar with this circuit. We know how it works. Zero, uh, logic one gives logic zero. Logic zero gives logic one. But what about when it's not logic zero and it's not logic one as an input? What about when the input is analog? Let's have a look and see what happens. So if I increase the voltage slowly, what we can see now is that both LEDs are partially on. So my NOT gate has an input of not quite one and not quite zero, and an output of not quite one and not quite zero. This is unexpected. We probably need to use the data logger to see what's happening properly. So now I've replaced my LEDs with the data logger. I'm measuring V in on the X axis and V out on the Y axis and I'll set it going and we'll see what we get. Now to start with we notice when the input voltage is 0 the output voltage is 5 which is what we would expect. It's an inverter, it's a knock gate. As we increase the input voltage the output voltage stays at logic 1, 5 volts. And as we pass an input voltage of 1 volt it's still 5 volts. This is working very nicely. And now, when we get to about 2 volts or so, the output voltage is starting to fall. But it's not falling to zero. It falls pretty quickly, but it didn't fall immediately. And then as we go right up to an input of 5 volts, the output is now logic zero. But in this region from here to here, this region of the graph, the output was undetermined. It was somewhere between logic 1 and logic 0. And if we go back the other way, we see the same thing happening. And sometimes this might be a problem, so we need to see how we can overcome this. I've made a very subtle change to the circuit. I've changed the chip. This is now not an inverter, a knock gate, but a Schmidt inverter, a Schmidt knock gate. Let's see how it behaves. So in exactly the same way as we had before, when the input voltage is 0, the output voltage is 5. When I increase the input voltage, the output voltage stays at 5 volts, which is logic 1. It stays at 5 volts, which is logic 1, as I increase the input voltage. And then when I get to the point where it's logic, the input becomes logic 1, so in this case, just under 3 volts, the output changes very sharply, very, very quickly. There was no doubt about it. It was either logic 1 or it was then immediately logic 0. And I go all the way up to my input being 5 volts, logic 1, and the output is logic 0, as you would expect. Let's just have a look at that in the other direction. So now I'm decreasing the input voltage, so it's going down from logic 1. And I get to the point where it's going to change. Now watch very carefully. And nothing happens. Because when you go in the other direction, from an input of logic 1 to an input of logic 0, the transition from 1 to 0 on the output, or 0 to 1 in this case, happens in a different place. If we annotate the screen, the output went down in this direction, but it went up at that point. 
it changes from logic 1 to logic 0 at about 2.8 volts, but it changes from logic 0 back to logic 1 at an input of 2.1 volts. It changes state at different places, and that's what makes it a Schmidt input, a Schmidt gate. The symbol for a Schmidt gate is this symbol here. We come along, down, across, and back, and back again. And there we go. That's my Schmidt logic gate. One very quick demonstration of why the Schmidt gate is so useful. I've put my regular NOT gate back in here now, the 4069, and I've replaced my potentiometer with a potential divider with an LDR in it. And at the moment, the input is a fairly high voltage, and my output is off. And if I make the LDR darker, the resistance goes up, the voltage of the input falls, and what you should notice is that the LED comes on, which is great. We've made a light detector. But the problem is the LED can be half on, and I only need a tiny change in light level, I hardly move my finger at all, and the LED switches between on and off. It's very sensitive to small changes. If I move my finger out of the way, it's hardly, I hardly need to move my thumb at all to vary between completely on and completely off. So that's not ideal. It's very sensitive to tiny changes in light level. Let's have a look at what happens if we use the Schmidt inverter. Now I'm being extremely naughty here. I'm taking chips out and putting other chips in while the power supply is still turned on. Hopefully none of my students will ever do that. But here's my Schmidt logic gate going in, my Schmidt knock gate. So what I do now is I notice that it does exactly the same thing. In the dark, the LED is on. In the light, the LED is off. However, notice that there's no intermediate stage. It's either off or it's on. Okay, It's very clear. And I have to make quite a big change to make it happen. I have to uncover the LDR to turn it off. And I have to really cover it quite well to turn it on. And that's due to this difference between the on state and the off state. It's turning on, the output's turning on here at one light level, and the output's turning off here at a different light level. And that's what makes this Schmidt inverter very, very useful indeed as interfaces and inputs and logic gates in general.